13, Wednesday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth, and no grass of the field had sprouted, for the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth, and was watering all the surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with a tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave man this order. You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, O oh, bless the Lord my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. O bless the Lord, my soul. All creatures look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach? and passes out into the latrine. Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of a man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile the gospel of the Lord. Reflection Where does evil come from and can we eliminate it from our personal lives? Jesus deals with this issue in response to the religious leader's concern with ritual defilement making oneself unfit to offer acceptable worship and sacrifice to God. The religious leaders were very concerned with avoiding ritual defilement, some no doubt out of reverent fear of God, and others out of fear of pleasing other religious-minded people. Jesus points his listeners to the source of true defilement evil desires, which come from inside a person's innermost being. Sin does not just happen from external forces. It first springs from the innermost recesses of our thoughts and intentions, 
from the secret desires which only the individual mind and heart can conceive. When Cain became jealous of his brother Abel, God warned him to guard his own heart, sin is couching at the door, its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain unfortunately did not take God's warning to heart. He allowed his jealousy to grow into spite and hatred for his brother, and he began to look for an opportunity to eliminate his brother altogether. When jealousy and other sinful desires come knocking at the door of your heart, how do you respond? Do you entertain them and allow them to overtake you? Fortunately God does not leave us alone in our struggle with hurtful desires and sinful tendencies. He gives us the grace and strength we need to resist and overcome sin when it couches at the door of our heart. The Lord wants to set us free from the burden of guilt and from the destructive force of sin in our personal lives. He wants to purify our hearts and renew our minds so we can love and act as he would love and act. The Lord is ready to change and purify our hearts through his Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Like a physician who probes the wound before treating it, God through his word and spirit first brings sin into the light, that we may recognize it for what it truly is and call upon his mercy and grace for pardon and healing. The spirit of truth is our consoler and helper. His power and grace enables us to choose what is good and to reject what is evil. Do you believe in the power of God's love to change and transform your heart? Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and make my heart like yours. Strengthen my heart and my will that I may I choose to love what is good and to hate what is evil.